For a lot of budding animation artists out there, you may be finishing or have just finished your studies and about to get out into the big world with your demo reel in hand and take the animation industry by storm. Now, you may be a little unsure about the path that lays ahead of you. If so, we are here with some tips from our previous guests from the industry to help make your transition into a professional career a little bit smoother. Stick around to the end when we are going to share with you quite possibly the best piece of advice we've ever received on getting a job in the industry. But first, let's put things into perspective. During one of our Q&A sessions, we were asked for some tips for fresh graduates. This is what David Hubert, CEO of Agora Studio, had to say. The first thing I have to that is coming to mind is maybe to try to figure out where you hope to land in the industry. Um, if you aspire to work on video game, you're open to the rest, but you would really like to, 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 to work in video game, then maybe starting to learn Unreal mm. uh, would be a good idea because then you can animate, integrate in Unreal, have a little piece of this in, in your demo. By the way, technical animators are almost impossible to find on the market these days. It's a uh, it, it's pretty uh, insane. So as you're it's working true. on different, you know, classic locomotion uh, the, that you have uh, uh, in game, uh, you also learn Unreal and you show that you're able to animate, integrate and manipulate your own animation in uh, Unreal. I, I mean, spending just a few weeks on, on that would be would bring huge value to your showreel. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking to you would aspire to work on short film or animated feature, then I would probably advise to continue to work on different acting pieces, uh, you know, long shot, mainly with body animation, facial close up, a lot of different, very short, but different animation that would show different skills that you are uh, developing. VFX, I, it might not be a bad idea to learn about creature animation and uh, a bit of motion capture. Uh, as well. So, you know, you're going to get out of school. You're not going to be hired the, the next day. You're going either to have a job just to pay the bill and, and continue to work on your showreel or just be, be home uh, and, and work full time to continue to work on your show, showreel. The idea is because your showreel is by and large what is going to get you into the industry. So the idea is what do you put in that showreel to give you more yeah. chances to be hired? To me, that would be that would depend of where you hope to land in the industry for your for your first job. David isn't the only person on our live streams to suggest catering your demo reel to the studio you want to work for. Samantha Youssef, a Canadian-born animator, is the founder of Studio Technique, an artistic training studio dedicated to the artistic development of professional and amateur artists. Samantha has been in the industry for the last couple of decades, having spent a lot of her career working at Disney. Samantha has met many people fresh out of school and shared with us this piece of advice. What advice would you have for students getting out of school? That's a hard one. <laughs> I, okay, I, I would say to what we were saying before, keep it more professional. Research studios. I, I mentor a lot of students that end up feeling like it's because we're encouraged to. I get that the message is out there, but don't just make it about like, if my artwork is so fabulous in my way, any studio would just want to hire me. You still, a studio is still looking for, yes, a unique voice and yes, a great portfolio, but also that you can work on their films and, and maintain their brand. So I would just say that look at where you're applying and make sure Sure that your artwork your animation like it suits the studio but still keeping your voice but keeping yeah. that in mind it's still a job so suits, it suits um, the studio but it be... also suits you like make sure it's a good fit both ways yes right? yeah both ways totally both ways i just see a lot of students yeah. that it's more about i they think that if they're the best then they yeah. get in but there's a little bit of that too so don't take it person like it's not mm -hmm. it's also like you could have an amazing demo reel and it could be flawless but it might not be what that studio is looking for so it's not a personal thing it's just that yeah. You have to know that they are looking for a certain thing too. Now you know that you may still have some work to put in and to cater your reel to the field of animation you're most interested in. So let's talk about that first job. Do you want to work for Disney, Sony, Ubisoft, ILM, WB Games? Yes, the big leagues are pretty appealing. However, let's hear from Lana Bakinski, lead animator at Riot Games. When Lana was a guest on our Conversation With stream, she was asked what advice she had for graduates. 
Now, even though Lana is a games animator, the advice she had can be applied to any field in our industry. I was really fortunate in my path, very fortunate to land the job at Blizzard when I did. And I, so I guess there's just two things. One, <coughs> jobs are luck, like a huge amount of luck. Hmm. My first job was not sure I had the skills to get to an interview. I had a reel that was solid, but they told me at the end of my interview that I only got that job because they were told a bad joke to the other person that they interviewed and they were way too embarrassed. So they hired me instead. <laughs> That is the most <laughs> random thing I've ever heard in my life. It's even more funny that they told you this. <laughs> and I'm like so happy they told me that because I mean I don't think there would have been a world that I was like I'm so great I got this job at Blizzard <laughs> in the past. But that's awesome. Though the level of humble is like I know mm. I got that job out of luck and being able to provide that insight to people mm. is like I was prepared. I mm. had the stuff. I got to a certain point, but rejection can just be bad luck. I think there's a period of time between school and getting a job that you might see a bunch of people that you went to school with getting jobs and it can start feeling really disheartening. Mm, totally. And it could just be like the places you're applying are not ready for you yet. But also the people that you see getting jobs can help you get a job. Don't be disheartened. Just mm -hmm. be patient. My other piece of advice is that, again, I'm very fortunate to land this job at Blizzard but there are so many jobs for animation that are not big name studios that are going to give you incredible experience yeah. that are going to level you up in a way that you did not think was possible. And especially if you're going into games, maybe your animation skill specifically is not the thing that's getting leveled up the fastest, but you realize, oh, I actually have all these other supplemental skills that I get to flex mm -hmm. and I have a hugely valuable part of this team and I see how to apply these other things now because I've worked in, in this space so that when applying to other jobs where I can start leveling up this animation skill, I'm T-shaped, as they say, you know, one really strong skill and a couple other supplementary ones. Like you have so much value and big studios are not the only place mm. who will yeah. value you. So yeah. applying yeah, only think... at AAA is, it would be not, I would not recommend only AAA. But there are some things that you should watch out for. Since everything changed for the animation industry in 2020, remote work has started to become a more common practice. We get asked a lot if people starting in the industry should choose a remote working lifestyle. Lance Lafort, owner of Lafort Talent Agency, told us one of the pitfalls he's discovered for newer artists working remotely. Are you seeing trends then, like different types of demographics that are having a harder time with that kind of work style versus others that really just think it's the best thing ever since sliced bread? I think the challenge is a brand new mm. graduate needs a lot of handholding or support. Mm. Okay. And so those, I believe some of those folks are struggling the most because, you know, the trainer is not in the room. You know, a lot of us learn organically by listening to the person next to us getting a review. Hey, mm. that model's a little tight there. I wouldn't have done that with the edge loops. You need to fix this up. You know, show me those wireframes. And two or three new people can just like sort of eavesdrop and get trained, right? Yeah. It's very difficult right now, unless we're doing a group format. And yeah. again, when I go back to, I think we're going to need new technology or to use the existing technology in ways that bridge these gaps, mm -hmm. right? Manny Fragilis is the creator of CGMA, an online academy for learning all aspects of the animation industry. And he's a former modeler for DreamWorks Animation. During our live stream with Manny, Brent went on a tirade about one of the biggest mistakes he sees graduates making. He gets pretty passionate here, so you might want to listen up. A lot of people get they get screwed because they put out they make their first demo reel out of school and then that's it. And then they just keep emailing the same recruiter with the same freaking email a, a, a demo reel. Really? Like you're showing them that you don't even give a crap about the no. job because you're not even willing to put any kind of real effort in continue. Like if you didn't get the job the first time, it's probably because you didn't make the cut somewhere. So exactly. show them that you know what? Hey, you're improving. I'm, I got, I get I got it. something else. While I keep looking for a job, I'm going to do the only thing that I can is get better at my craft, and I'm going to exactly. show you so they can see. Not only do they see the arc, they can they start measuring kind of a trajectory. So yeah. then they're like. Like, holy shit when they hire you now they're like this person's like a like a bottle rocket man they are i look at their first uh, demo yeah. reel you'll get to the point where these recruiters are like fighting to get you a job because yeah. they're like this guy this guy deserves it look at this freaking work look at his look at the curve here they want to be part in, of your story arc of you know what I mean? they want to get you that first job now are you ready for our best piece of advice excellent 
But before we tell you, we just want to let you know that Agora Community is dedicated to helping artists in the film, television and gaming industries improve their skills and connect with other artists no matter what their level. You can head to our website for more educational content, find free rigs to craft your perfect demo reel, and get a personalized animation review from one of our many on-hand experts. And don't forget, you can also join our Discord of over 7,000 like-minded artists, all learning and helping each other grow. So back to Manny Fragelis. He shared with us his number one tip on how he established relationships with recruiters that would always get him remembered. This is what I used to do. So I would apply to a bunch of studios. So let's say I applied to 10 studios. They're looking for models. And you get like different responses. Sometimes you don't get any response. What I would do is I would, every time I would work on a new piece, I would send an email, it was almost like a newsletter, to all of these recruiters and go, hey, so-and-so, hope you're doing well, <laughs> long time to see. I, like I just wanted to show you what I was working on, <laughs> this new piece. That's it. That's such a genius and idea. All of my jobs. That's perfect. Because That's perfect. you know why? After that first email, they don't remember me because they're no. getting hundreds and thousands Absolutely. of emails, whatever. But you yep. know what? Number one, the fact that it was a part of a thread, so there's that history built in. Yep. So it's not that cold email, it's a part of the thread. And because it's like, oh yeah, that guy. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, at the end of the day, it's relationships, right? It's networking. Yep, yep. And so that's all it's about. It's mm -hmm. getting yourself out there. And that is a part of branding that no one freaking wow. talks yeah. about. It's in your branding. case, in your case, you just understood who your audience was. And your yeah. audience were the recruiters. Yeah. And you recruiters. just spoke directly to them in a the way same. that they would remember you. Yeah. And, and the, the reason, reason what and I remember at DreamWorks when I got the job. I'm sorry, David. DreamWorks when I got the job, the recruiters is finally, it's it's great to finally meet you. Yeah. It's like, I feel like I've known you for the last two years because <laughs> exactly. it awesome. took two years of me sending work. Hey, this is what I'm working on. And I was very smart about it. I was very strategic about it. I would model DreamWorks characters yeah, actually. and send them images yeah. of and not DreamWorks, but DreamWorks like characters yeah, yeah. and send them those images. And if I was applying to Blizzard, I would create Blizzard like assets and send that. And this is something that if you do now, it's like that just translates into everything else that we're talking about about. Totally. It's all about understanding how to engage people and how to sell yourself. How do you want to be presented? Did we miss anything out? Let us know some of your best tips for students and graduates in the animation industry, or even share some of your own success stories in the comments below. We hope this video helped and we wish all of the students and fresh grads out there the best of luck in the coming months. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, stay tuned and stay animated.